Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu wa Salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la wa ba'd. All praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, his companions, his family, his companions and his followers until the Day of Judgment. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to say in the beginning Jazakumullah uh, khair, the people of Windsor, the people of this uh, great masjid for having me uh, tonight with you. Since I was picked from the airport by the brothers, uh, I can't really describe uh, my joy and happiness uh, and the amount of uh, hospitality and generosity that uh, your community have shown me. Uh, and it's really something uh, uh, amazing and it's uh, something very uh, easy to be recognized and very hard to be uh, forgotten. So, Jazakumullah uh, khairan. I just also noticed that, then I was told, uh, when I walked into the masjid, one thing I noticed, it, and uh, it was confirmed to me later on, which is uh, this diversity, uh, diversity of people, people from different, uh, they look like different backgrounds, a different age, and that's very interesting. Uh, I really uh, appreciate that, and I uh, ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, to uh, bless you all and to uh, uh, yeah, and guide all of you to the best. And if this been said, there's one thing to all of that uh, that I got the honor to meet to your Imam uh, previously before the Salat. And it was a great honor to meet him and to uh, yeah, he remember, to remind me of uh, some of the uh, great names and scholars that uh, I have seen and I uh, learned from uh, their actions before their words. Uh, today, as you heard, talking about those who believe in the unseen, those who believe in the al ghayb those who believe in al ghayb uh, there is a little bit to twist to this. Uh, uh, my talk is not be directly about believing in the unseen. Uh, rather, it's going to talk about those who believe in the unseen. It's not talking about the believer themselves, uh, the good doers, which is, I believe, each, each and every one of us uh, deserve this title, that we are all uh, doing what is good. We are all, alhamdulillah, fasted the month of Ramadan. And we pray Taraweeh, we witness uh, Khatm al Quran, we witness Qiyam al uh, we just pray Isha. All this is a good deed. And uh, Al Mu'min, the believer, the good doer, uh, no doubt that there is an outcome of your good deeds. Yes, we heard a lot about the consequences of our sins and uh, how it can affect us personally, can affect, affect our society, impact our community, and impact the whole entire humanity. But guess what? It works also the other way around. As much as you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as much as you do from the good deeds, believe it or not, there is a great impact of your good deeds on you. The good of the goodness, or the good of the good. That there is a lot of good things happen to you because of your good deeds. And sometimes we realize it, sometimes we connect these together, and sometimes we forget. Tonight, I would like to share with you some of these points that I believe we should remember, we should look for it in ourselves, in our family, in our community, and we always see it in front of us, because that one thing will motivate you to be always better persons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he said in Surah Al-Nahr, promise the believers, promise the believers two things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Man amira salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min those who do good deeds, males or females. وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحِيَنَّهُ حَيَاتًا طَيِّبًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them that they will live in good. They will live in good. Then, 
ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون. There's certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to reward them. Reward them when? In the hereafter. According to the good deeds that they have done in this dunya. In this dunya. How the good deeds will lead to good life. To good life. How the good deeds that you do, regardless how much you do. And after this lecture you will know, as much as you do more from the good deeds, as much as you will get more from what you're going to give today. And as much as your good deeds are less, as much as you're not going to find much of what you're going to hear tonight. One of the first things I would like to start with, that you find in this dunya, that the good deeds, one of the good of the good, that good deeds will bring tranquility to your heart. Well, let you live in peace with yourself, first of all. It will, bring, it will lead the heart to be serene and tranquility. And this is something so unique and so important. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Balad, He told us, لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد الله سوار البيت لا أقسم بهذا البلد which it means لا أقسم بشيء أعظم من قسم بهذا البلد سمونا في لغة العرب إضراء لا إضراء that Allah سبحانه said I will not swear with anything in this verse but al balad which is Mecca, which is Mecca. Wa anta hillum bihad al balad. Wa wa anibi wa la wa 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 na wa la. That Allah subhanahu wa taala swear again by the father and the son, the father and the son. Swear on what? What the point that Allah subhanahu wa taala making him, making making it in, in this verse? La qad khalaqna al insan fi kabad. That Allah created human. To live in this life in Kabad, which is hardship, which is that human live in this life, in this dunya, going through struggles and hardship and going through calamities. That's every humanity. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal insanu innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadiha. Oh, mankind, and another. Uh, opinion among the Mufassirin, Ya ayyuha al-insan, yani Ya ayyuha al-mu'min, inna ka kajihun ila rabbika kadha, famulaqi. That all believers, or all of humanity, you are going to live in this dunya in kadah, another word, kabad and kadah, which it means struggle. You will find a lot of struggle in this dunya. This world in life, don't ever think it's going to go smooth, perfect, for you. It doesn't work this way. This is not how reality, this is not how this dunya was created. No, it's a struggle. And what you need in this struggle? You're looking for that serene. You're looking for that, for that tranquility. To have it while you are going through these calamities and uh, when a hardship or calamity strike you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about human. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا Humans are halu'a. يعني immediately will be terrified. Immediately will be disturbed. In nothing, it doesn't take much for you to make humans so scared. Have you seen the stock markets? Just just what happened? Just some news here and there. There's nothing really happened. It's the whole thing's collapsed. Why? Because there's no trust. There's fear. What's driving people? That's the nature of humanity. So, and also, whenever you have wealth, you are so tight. And whenever you are poor, you are so frustrated. So, except, illa musalli. Except the good doers, the one who prays, the one who are. A believers, the one who offer the good deeds, their life is totally different. They see life in a di from a different perspective. يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ 
بالقول الثابت في الحياه الدنيا وفي الاخره الله سبحانه وتعالى support the believer in the dunya and the akhirah support the believer in the dunya and the akhirah i just want you to imagine somebody somebody you strip him from the most precious things that humanity has and so many of us don't appreciate that thing because we never taste to, we never really uh, try to live without it and those who knew what it how precious this is they understand exactly the words is gonna you're gonna hear it now which is your freedom you strip somebody from the street locking them up after meeting people getting out go any any place that you want you can't go anywhere you're locked in a small tiny hall and guess what you were taken away from your family you were taken away from your friends you will be isolated from the people that you love and you like when you see the whole entire world in front of you only in a very small tiny room somebody was thrown in prison that person was one of the great scholars of Islam his name is Ahmed ibn Abdul Harim ibn Taybiyyah al-Hawari rahimahullah wa ghafarallahu la this Imam he was thrown in jail in his time and when he was thrown in jail, that's a calamity, that's a hardship. How a good doer, how a believer will react to this? When he was entered to the jail, and everybody thought this is terrible, and maybe himself, he was thinking about it, that it will be a terrible thing. But guess what? He, when the moment he walked into the jail, he recited the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hadid, وَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورٍ وَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ فَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورٍ لَهُ بَعْضٍ بَعْضِنُهُ فِيهِ الرَّحْمَةِ وَظَاهِرُهُ مِنْ قِبَلِهِ الْعَذَابِ He said, between me and outside the world, like a wall, and he called the verse, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that this wall, from inside mercy, and from outside, it is adab, it is suffering. And he said, this is what exactly my cell became. From inside, it's mercy, tranquility, so peaceful. It is better than outside. It's much better than outside. Allahu Akbar. Then he said the most famous statement that so many people maybe heard it before. He said, what my enemy can do to me? My happiness, my joy, my Jannah, it is with me inside my heart. They cannot strip that from me. They cannot take it away from me. If they kill me, I will die as a shaheed. If you send me another country, different country, it will be an opportunity to visit new communities and to yeah, and you see another new land. And if they lock me up, like what are they doing now? It is khalwa. I will take this opportunity to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna al mahbusa man hubisa an Allah. Inna al mahbusa man hubisa an Rabbi. Wa inna al asira man asarahu awa. He said that the one in jail. The one in prison is the one who is locked up from being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The real prisoner is the one who's been imprisoned by his own desire, by his own shaytan. As his student said, Humans try to run away from being slaves to Allah and they end up slaves to their own desires and their own shaitan. Anybody run away from being a slave to Allah ends up to be a slave to the shaitan and a slave to his own desire. This student said, وَعَلِمَ اللَّهِ مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدًا أَطْيَبَ عَيْشًا مِنْهُ مَعَ مَا كَانَ فِيهِ مِنْ ضِيقِ الْعَيْشِ مع ما كان فيه من ضيق العيش وخلاف وخلاف الرفاهية والنعيم بل على ضدها ومع ما كان فيه من الحبس والتهديد والإرهاق ومع ذلك كان من أطيب الناس عيشا وأشرحهم صدرا وأقواهم قلبا وأسرهم وأسرهم نفسا تلوح نظرة نظرة النعيم من وجهه وكنا إذا اشتد بنا الخوف وساعت بنا الظنون وضاقت بنا الأرض بما رحبت أتيناه فما هو إلا أن نراه ونسمع كلامه فيذهب ذلك كله 
وينقلب انشراحا وقوة ويقينا وطمأنينة. This student said, whenever we live, we never we have a problem. Imagine he is in jail. This is outside. Whenever we have a problem, whenever we have a, 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 يعني something uh, so confusing and we get so confused and we don't know what to do, we go to him to visit him, to talk to him. We come into him very frustrated. Just few words from him with this big smile and this shining face, which is you can see the sense of optimism coming out of his face before his words. He said, everything changed. We feel so calm by the, by the words, by his words. We'll be very, we we'll go back to our society, to our community, to our, to our family, full of optimism. And we're looking at a verb to life in a very bright way. He said, I haven't seen anybody living his life like him. He's so calm. He's so peaceful. He was not rich. He was not living in, 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 a, in, a, in a very uh, in, a, in a very good life. He was always been taken to jail, always been threatened, but always calm, always have this confidence, always have this tranquility in his heart. Why? Because that's what good deeds lead to. Good deeds leads that people love you. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Maryam, verse 97, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believe and do good deeds. سَيَجَعْلُ لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانُ مُدَّى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them love, will give them love from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the hadith of the Sahih, hadith Jibreel, the famous hadith, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves somebody, Allah will tell Jibreel, I love so and so person, so love him. Then Jibreel will call upon the angels. I would say, hey, Allah loves so and so, so every angel should love that person. And in the end of the hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him wide acceptance. He would be accepted widely in the society, in the community. People love him, people talk to him, and just when you hear his talk, when they talk to him, when they talk to her, when they listen to her, when they interact with her or with him, they will find their, their hearts open to that person. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمْ يَشْهَدُ لَهُ ثَلَاثَ إِلَّا وَجَرَتْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ there is no rawah al-Tirmidhi wa huwa isnadun jayyid. That the Nabi Sallallahu said, if there is a Muslim, three people, will witness three true believers, will witness that he is among Ahlul Jannah, he deserves Jannah. He deserves paradise. He deserves paradise. And Umar radiallahu used this hadith in particular as a, when he commented on somebody, his janazah, his funeral passed by, then Umar radiallahu anhu, when he heard people talking good about him, he said, this person among Ahl Jannah, and he said, because I heard the Prophet ﷺ said, any person, three people will say that he's among Ahl Jannah, he deserves paradise. That's why the Prophet ﷺ also said, there is no believer will die. And 40 men, or 40 people, 40 muahid, 40 believers, they never commit any form of shirk will pray funeral prayer on that person Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their intercession for that person, for that person. Umar sent a letter to Sa'd ibn Waqas telling him إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا حَبَّبَ إِلَيْهِ خَلْقًا فَاعْتَبِرْ مَنْزِلَتَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا لَكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِثْلَ مَا لَكَ عِنْدَ النَّاسِ Umar told Sa'd ibn Abi Waqas, why Sa'd? Sa'd is a leader, is a military leader, is a general. And as you know, it's tough to be a general, it's tough to be a military uh, leader. You have to be tough to lead your army. So that advice really fits the situation of Sa'd ibn Waqas. He said, Sa'd, be careful. See how much people treat you and look up to you and how much they love you. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you as well loves you as well. My brothers and sisters, believe me, the love that you find from your wife towards you, the love that you will find from your children towards you, 
It could be one of the outcome of your good deeds. It could be one of the outcome of your good deeds. That's why Sufyan al-Hasan al-Basri before that, he said when I commit a sin, I see the other, the result of the sin in the way my wife treats me. When she starts making problems and, and troubles and, and we're having fight, I know this is because of sin I commit. Yes, those people are so pure to that extent. And it goes the other way around. That love that you will find in your family's heart towards you, it is also one that could be triggered, could be improved, could be getting stronger because you are a righteous person, because of the high righteous person. Al-Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. Al-Imam Ahmad, that Imam who used to pray 300 rak'ah every morning. Every morning, 300 rak'ah. You saw the 300 rak'ah every year. The one of the great fuqaha of Islam, Yaqur rahimahullah, rahimahullahu umma salih. أقامت معي ثلاثين سنة ما اختلفت معها في كلمة. I lived with Umm Salih 30 years. We never ever had a single argument. That's an outcome, an outcome of righteousness. It is normal to have an argument at home, by the way. Just don't be, go to the extreme. And of this been said, one of the main reasons I'm in, in Canada, I have a course talking about the life of the scholars. And one of my goal in this course, one of my goal in this course, is really to correct the way we see the life of the scholars. Because sometimes when you take a story like this, I never had a fight with my wife 30 years, you take it to the extreme, you take it literally. But I want to, I'm teaching my students uh, and the brother and sister who are coming to this course, inshallah, how to be a critical and how to have a filtration system when they receive narrations like this, how they understand it correctly. Because you know what? And Imam Ahmad is not more righteous than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had fights with his wife and had arguments with his wife. And he will stay for the whole night not talking to each other. And he stayed 30 days not talking to them. Doesn't make him more righteous. That's why you need to understand it in its perspective. The point here that the love that you find in your family towards you, it could be as one of the result of your righteousness. One of your righteousness. You know, one of the good outcome of the good deeds, those who believe in Allah and the unseen, you really enjoy what you're doing. You enjoy the good deeds. You know when you pray and you don't feel anything? How many times you feel that? Allahu Akbar. And you just find out. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. What is in between? I don't really remember much of it. I don't really enjoy it. You know, Rahimallah, Ya'ani, Shaykh al Islam, Aydan, Ya'qur, Ida lam tajd al amali halawatan fi qalbik, wa nshirahan fattahimna. فإن الرب شكور يعني أنه لا بد أن يثيب العامل على عمله في الدنيا بحلاوة يجدها في قلبه وقوة شراح وقرة عين. الجميع رحمه الله سعيد that the Muslim whenever you do a deed a good deed and you don't enjoy it, you know what? When you give sadaqa to somebody and after you give it sadaqa, you feel sweetness. You say الحمد لله that I was able to do that. Alhamdulillah that Allah guided me to do that. To dig my pocket and get this $20 and donate it for the sake of Allah. I feel not arrogant, not proud, proud of myself that I defeated the shaitan. I feel that I, was come, I came one step closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't feel that after the salat, after the good deeds, after any good deeds that you do, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ عَمَلَكْ مَدْخُولٍ you, you need to know that there is something in your deeds. Either your intention needs to be purified more, or you are not doing it according to the sunnah 100%. There is something here wrong need to be fixed. Allah Akbar. How many salat we never enjoyed it? How many good deeds it passed? We do it because it became habit that we don't feel it anymore. We don't feel the impact of it on us. It make us feel more closer. I enjoyed it more. Ibn Sirin, rahimahullah, 
used to say, Wallahi inni la ajidu li kulli salati halawa takhtalifu an ghayriya. Each and every salat, this five daily prayer, each one it has its own taste. Yani when I pray duha, I can't wait until the next duha. Not the asr, no, the next duha. Because duha, it has its own taste. Asr, it has its own flavor. Maghrib, it has its own style. Each salat has some, has, has different taste for me. Why they reach that level? Because they are righteous. That's one of the outcome of your good deeds. You know, one of the outcome, واحدة من حسن الحسنات الغنى الوفير that you became rich. And I don't mean rich necessarily in a very materialistic way. No. It is being rich, being content, being happy. Uh, and that's really al -ghina. You know what ghina in Arabic language means? al -ghina asluhul istighna. And what's the opposite of rich? Poor. When poor in Arabic language, what do we call poor in Arabic language? Anybody knows? Huh? Faq. Comes from faqir. al istiqar يعني الاحتياج. Al-faqir it means you need. And you need somebody to help you. That's, what's, that's why all humans are فقراء إلى الله يا أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إلى الله والله هو الغني الحميد. All humans are فقراء poor because they need Allah and Allah هو الغني. He's the most rich because rich you don't need. If you have money, I don't need you. If I don't have money, I need you. That's what it is. So the real meaning of rich. Whatever you have and you feel you are satisfied, you don't need anybody. So that means you became automatically ghani. That's right. Because al ghina it's to feel that I don't need you. That's why al Fulayr ibn Iyar, a man came to him and said to him, This is a gift for you. He said, I will take it from you only if you are rich. He said, Alhamdulillah, I'm rich. He said, You have money? He said, I have 2,000 dinar, 2,000 pieces of gold. Then Fulayr smiled and he said, وَهَلْ تَأْمَلْ أَنْ تَكُونَ أَرْبَعًا Are you looking forward to make this 2,000, 4,000? He said, of course, absolutely. قَالَ إِذَنْ أَنْتَ فَقِيرًا He said, if you're looking forward to make it four, you're fakir because you still need that. No problem, it's not shame to be fakir. But from that, you learn the point that you know what, you reached a to, to a point to be content, satisfied with what you with what you have. In Nalina Yaqul and Nabi Sasallam Lis Ankatal Hart. Being rich it doesn't mean that you have so much money. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, he told us what rich means. Being rich when you are content with what you have. When you feel that you don't need people. When you feel that you don't need people. Being rich, being poor, you know, I always, I always, يعني, this is one of the things when I read it, especially in the books of Saluk, they talk about which, which way is there, to be rich or to be poor. You know what, I, I really think that debate, which is sometimes come in the form of even beautiful poetry, like this guy, he said, uh, يا عائب الفقر ألا تستجر عيب الغنى أكبر لو تعتبر he said you making fun of يعني poverty the poor person is 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 يعني much higher than the rich person the problem with being rich is way more clear than being poor من شرف الفقر ومن فضله على الغني إن صح من كنبا if you want to know how that the poor person is much better than the rich person. He said, when, if you want to be rich, you need to disobey Allah. To steal money, to take money not from not doesn't belong to you. To be rich, you have to do something haram to be rich. But you don't do haram to be poor. So he said, that's why poor person is better than rich person. All this argument is not correct. All it does it sounds might be maybe sounds wow on the first side, but it's not correct. You know why? Because 
being rich or poor is like being healthy or not healthy. Being born uh, 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 white or, or dark. Being born in, uh, with an Arabic tongue or an English tongue. Or anything. You know what's really matter? How you will behave when you are poor and how you will behave when you are rich. That's what it matters. It doesn't matter if you are rich or poor. It is how you behave if you are rich. And how you behave when you are poor. Because you might be poor but kafir. And you might be rich but shakir, mumfir, muttaqi. That's, that's the right thing. That's why the ulama, the muhaqqiqin min ahli al-ilm, they said that al-ibrah bil-hari. Hada al-ghani wa hal hada al-faqir. Wa laysat fi al-faqir wa al-ghina fi dhatiha. Fi dhatiha. So as much good deeds, being rich, being rich in your good deeds, it make your heart content, it will make you satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides. No doubt. Good deeds protect the society, the community, the family from being affected with a general punishment. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was asked, أَنَا أَهْلَكُوا وَفِينَا الصَّالِحُ شِفْ كَيْفِ أَخْرِ يعني الصلاح يمنع الهلاك. He said, Ya Rasulullah, can we ever be destroyed as a nation while we have righteous people among us, good doers among us? They understood the companions that as long as good deeds have been practiced in the society, that will prevent the punishment from coming. He said, yes, if the corruption became the majority, if the, if the good doers or the good deeds became something yeah, any, uh, minor, and, 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 and not a common and earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, in Surah 200, in verse 249, Because there is good and bad on earth, because of the existence of the good, otherwise Allah will destroy the whole entire earth. And whoever wants. It is because of your Salat. It is because of your Siyam. It is because of your Qiyam al It is because of the Sadaqah, of that two, four, five dollars that you put it in the box. It is because of your participation in a circle like this. It is because of your participation in the Da'wah, in the mosque or in your area. Because of your support to your Islamic school. It is because of your support of any social activity that taking place in your society. Because of this deeds, Allah protects society. يقول عبد الله عون the son of عبد الله بن عوفة بن سعود رضي الله عنه لو لم يذكر الله في غفلة الناس لهلك الناس it is because those who remember Allah and mention Allah سبحانه وتعالى while people are unaware of that because of those people who always remember Allah who always be grateful and thankful and asking for His forgiveness otherwise Allah will destroy this earth سبحان الله one of the outcome of your good deeds, the righteousness of your children. As much as you do good in this dunya, this is will impact and affect your children and the children of your children. You remember the story from Khadr? When he found uh, that wall, when he built the wall, and there were treasure underneath that wall, he said that their father had hidden this, yani he had hidden this treasure under the wall. يقول عمر بن عبد العزيز يقول هذا كان جدهم السابع. This is the great 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 grandfather. Can you imagine that? Because of his, because of that man was righteous, Allah protect their children. You want to protect your children. You want to secure your children's futures. Make sure that you offer today as much as from the good deeds. كان سعيد بن المسيب يطيل في صلاة ويلتفت إلى ولدي ويقول والله يا بني إني لا أطيل في صلاتي وأرجو أن بها يحفظك الله سعيد بن المسيب one of the great imams among the tabi'in used to say when he prayed the night he made his night prayer very long and it's the only reason I'm making I'm making it so long like this so Allah سبحانه وتعالى protect you by this long night prayer. He talk, he's talking to his own son. He's, he's talking to his own son. Mothers, 
fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers, if you really care about the safety, the righteousness of your children and your great-grandchildren, make sure that you offer as much to them from the good deeds. Shem Hamad Sharif, he, once I heard him saying something, and then since I heard him saying that, I started paying attention to it. He told me, Sheikh Walid, do you notice that every half of the Quran, every person who yani, has memorized the Quran, I, he said, I noticed that always one of his parents made Qiyam al either the mother or the father. And since he told me that, I've been digging, I've been looking, and I can tell you it's very much accurate. That's always the one who finished up the Quran, one of his parents are among those who stay in the night, even if it's not one prayer, but they have shared al Qiyam al You know what good deeds make, what, how, how good deeds affect your life, make you live in good, it make your time and your moments and your hours and your days in this dunya blessed. Mubarak, Barakatullah. There is a great Imam, his name, uh, Al Nawawi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Al Imam Al Nawawi. And Imam Al Nawawi passed away when he was what, 45 years old. That's it, 45 years old. This man, his books, his writings have reached every corner on the earth. Every generation since this man died benefited from his work. How many masjids in the world read from their salih? How many persons learn from al adkar and no Millions and millions and millions of people. This person was able to manage to put together a lot of books, a lot of books in a very short period of time. They estimated that he used to write every day four, four, arba'atu kararis, yani four big chapters. He authored every day four big chapters. The Ibn Taymiyyah that uh, yani I told you about, who died also in 67 years old. Some of the ulama said that he authored over 300 books. And Ibn yani, Dhabi said, no, it is 500. And Ibn Rajab said, I have seen more titles than 500. He said, Allah knows how many books that this man was able to, brought, uh, to write. Ibn Abi Dunya, a very famous uh, 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 Ali Muslim, he authored 1,000 books by himself. Ibn Asakir, when he wrote the history of Dimash, the history of Dimash, or his, his book in history, Ibn Asakir's book in history, do you know how many volumes? 80 volumes. He wrote it. Ibn Hazm in Al Andalus wrote over 400 volumes. Ibn Shahi, 330 titles. One of these titles, one of his books, 330 books, one of the books, a book it called At Tafsir, Ibn Shahi, 1,000 volumes. Alf Juz. And the Muslim was. 1,500 a chapter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give barakah in their time. Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi used to pray 300 rak'ah every day. And he makes khatm al-Quran every day. Every 24 hours, he makes one khatm al-Quran. Where he get time for, from? And guess what? Those people, they work, they earn money, and they write books. They teach, they are good to their family, they look after their family. If you want the secret recipe, make sure that you show up in the weekend, inshallah. I'll show you how we used to do that in the course. It's not really advertising, it's up to you. That's because it's a really, it's something, it's not by words, it's something by watching with your own eyes. Their life. You know what? Good deeds always, always provide you exit when you are in a hardship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Talaq, Surah 65, I guess. Uh, 
ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب. Those who have taqwa, Allah will always provide them exit when they are in a hardship and calamity. And will provide them from an, يعني, uh, in a way that they never anticipated. They never anticipated. You know, the, the, who, the Nabi Sallallahu told the story of three people in Turkey and a big huge rock blocked the exit. How they were able or managed to exit that cave. Why? How Allah Subhanahu wa Taala removed that rock through their good deeds. Every one of them mentioned one of the good deeds that he did in his life. That what good deeds lead. Out of the Malik in Ashtari, which is the one Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed these verses and related to the story. This verses was related was was sent down to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the story of Auf ibn Malik when the kuffar when the kuffar have taken his son they they taken his son the pagans in mecca they taken his son so Auf went to in nabi sallallahu and he told ya rasulullah they took my son what should i do and in nabi sallallahu he won't he, he can't fight at that time and to get him back then he said ista'in billah hawla wa la quwwata illa billah Say Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, la hawla wa la quwwata. He went back to his wife and he told his wife, she said, what the Prophet said to you? She's waiting for the answer. Then she, he told her, he only told me, say as much as you can, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Allahu Akbar. What do you think his wife, she said? Listen to the believer female, the righteous female, the good to her female. The best advice he had given you. Then all of a sudden, their son coming home. All of a sudden, their son coming home. And coming home with what? With 1,000 sheep. Then they said, uh, sorry, 400 sheep. 400 sheep. Why? If you are by me, I'm 400 sheep with him. This is what happened. He said, I was one, yeah, like one night sitting, and all of a sudden the mushriki, the, those who have taken me, they forgot, they forgot to tie my hand. And I kept quiet. And they stopped drinking until they got drunk and they slept. So I was able to take all the sheep and they didn't even wake up. And I left the whole thing and I came to Medina. And Allah revealed the verse. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide exit to them. Abu Muslim al-Khawlani, his wife, she said, take this dirham, this dirham, and get us flour from the market. That's the only thing we have. He went. And he said, in my way I saw a beggar who cried, cried, asking me by Allah and by all the names of Allah to give him. I, I couldn't do anything. I took the girl home and I gave it to him. And I said, my wife going to make my night hell tonight. And I said, just to keep her busy, I found a stick of hay and I put the bag, fill it up with hay. It looks like half something in it. And I give it to her and I run to the mystery. <laughs> I told them I don't want to face the problem. At least she calmed down a little bit, you know. He said I came back and she was yeah, and having she cooked bread. She paid for the bread. And he said, How did you do that? She said, From the flour that you provided me with Fabaka. Then he stopped crying. Allah, he doesn't know where that came from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He provide and provide exits for you when you have calamity, you have hardship. Don't ever, when you are in the hardship, think that disobeying him, stopping the good deeds will take you anywhere. Sometimes when, when some sisters come to complain about family problem, she's so stressful, she's very stressed, she has so much stress in her house. The first thing she did, she quit praying on time. She said, yeah, I'm very depressed, I'm very bad situation. You know, even I don't pray anymore in time. SubhanAllah. How Allah will provide you, ya akhi and ya akhti, exit and provide you help. If, if the first thing you do, you quit doing the good deeds. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters.
one of the excellent outcome of this, yani from our, for the good deeds of us in this dunya. Baraka, not only in time, baraka in whatever we have in our hand. Baraka in our children, baraka in our money, baraka in our homes, baraka in our work, baraka in our community. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Barakat. Do you know what's baraka? Baraka originally comes from the word birka. You know the birka? Birka, where all the water gathered. Like the oasis or a place has a lot of water. When there's a lot of water, there's a lot of good around that water. Because water brings a lot of good. So there's, uh, basically you can have, you can plant uh, you have trees, you can bring animals, there is shade, there's living. There's a lot of barakah. That's why the word come baraka from. Because it comes originally from the birka to al-ma'iyya al So there is a lot of good will come to you. And this is Allah SWT said, a lot of good will come to you from heavens and earth if people have taqwa, if people have taqwa. And Imam Ahmed rahimahullah narrated in the Musnad that in Bani Umayya after the time of Umar ibn Aziz, after the Umayyad's Khilafah collapsed and the Abbasis came, Abu Ja'far uh, al-Mansur found in the, one of the chests in the Muslim treasury uh, a sea, uh, uh, like a bag had in it, had in it a grain of wheat, a grain of wheat, in the size of the, the date's seeds, the date's bed. The grain of wheat in that, in the size of the date's uh, seed, that big. That's a grain of wheat. And in it, written, piece of paper, هَكَذَا كَانَتِ الْحِنْطَةُ فِي زَمَنِ الْعَدْلِ فِي زَمَنِ الْعَمَرِ Certain, they kept this, it's like, you know, like in museums, they have something, they found them, they keep a sample of it, that they said, and written on it, this is how the grain of wheat looks like in the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, in the time of justice, in the time of justice. Good deeds, make your face shine. No, if you watch No. That's why those who met the Yamil Lady, their faces always shine. Because in the night, they rather to stay with the noon of Samawat or Ar, with the light, the source of all lights in heaven and earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them from his light. You look good, you look fresh. SubhanAllah, the ulama said an example. If you deal with somebody who's so rich, so powerful in this dunya, don't you think that being close to him, this will impact the way you look? I know some brothers in my own community. They were taken to work with congressmen in our community. They used to come to my master. Young brother, mashallah, his twins. Allah, I still remember the way he dressed and he would, after he started working with the congressman for after so on, after one year. Wow, he, I see this and said, he looked sharp. He looked, you know, he now very clean, you know. The hair is just uh, right, and the suit, and he looked, yeah, and he, mashallah, very good. Why? Because he hang out with people, powerful people like that. It's, it's impacting. What happened to you? You became, look, mashallah, very shining. That I just want you to imagine those who always with the king of all the kings, with Rabbi Samawat wal how you will look like, ya. Yeah. If this is how human impact human. So how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you look like? As much as you come closer to Him, as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you, you your face just by looking at you, the salihin, you can recognize them just from their faces, from looking at them. Ya akhi, whoever leaves anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever leaves anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide him better than that's one of the good deeds is to leave what is haram. If the idea, one of our mashayikh said, who used to be a teacher in Al Azhar, heard the story from his shiukh as well in Al Azhar. 
He said in Al-Azhar there, in the old days people come from the villages and to study in Al-Azhar and to live there. He said one of the Shia had one of the students, a very nice man, but he was very poor and young. One day this young man was walking by house and he saw the house, the door open. He walked into the house and he found a food, mashallah, fresh uh, uh, bread and uh, butter and uh, cheese and about to, to, dig, to eat. Then he said, it's haram for me to eat from this. I am a student of knowledge, coming all the way from the southern of, of Egypt to, to Cairo to learn not to steal. Astaghfirullah. And he, yeah, he went to the help and he felt bad that he did that. He said, in the same day, after Dhuhr, and a woman came to his chair, she talked to him. And he said, okay. Then he said to, the, to this young man, come, I want to talk to you. Are you married? He said, no. He said, I have this woman who came, she has a daughter, she's a widow. And her daughter, she inherited a lot of money for her father. She's looking for a student of Nawal, a person righteous who will take care of her. He said, I don't have any money. He said, don't worry. She will let you live with them. She is only the mother and the daughter. And you marry her and you will basically to be, a, I, I know that you are trustworthy. Let's go see the girl. And this one, it is the same house. He walked into the morning. He said, Wallahi, it is the same house. I walk, and guess what? When we sit, they provide us with the food that I was almost going to eat from it in Haram. And now I got the food, and I got the one who cooked the food. <laughs> Wallahi, whoever leaves something for Allah, يعوذه الله خيرا منه. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَهَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ If you do good with Allah, do you think He will do anything less than the best to you? No. No. That's why, that's why those who have done good in their life, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them in the dunya, in their life and after their death, and after them, look at Abu Bakr, Umar, Ibn al-Khattab, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu arwan. Look at them. How many, how many young boys used to take care of the sheep and the goats in Mecca? How many young boys was in the town of Prophet doing this job? Hundreds and thousands of them. Do we remember any one of those people? Do we know their names? But every Muslim knows who Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is. That is how the Ihsan is in the Ihsan. Abu Hanifa wa Malik wa Shafi. Tell me if Malik rahimahullah was busy with being businessman. Or Shafi rahimahullah. Or Imam Abu Hanifa. All what he did, you know what he used to make milk and buttermilk and raw and he sell it. If this is what he will, it opened the biggest factory in his life in that time. What is it? Nobody will remember it. But those people, because of their righteousness, because of their good deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them famous like this. And guess what? Allah guided them to follow the sunnah of the Prophet in the smallest area and in the biggest area. And Imam Ahmad, one of the things that I, I cannot take it out of my head, when I remember Imam Ahmad, just to that extent, they follow the sunnah of the Prophet. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, and one time the ruler was mad at him and he wanted to punish him. He was hiding in one of his students' house. One of his students' house, his name is Wahib ibn Hani. He stayed at his house three days, then he said, let's move. Then he said, why? He said, because in the Mr. Sallam, hide in the ghar three nights only. To that extent, to that extent. Because of that righteousness, Ibn al-Jawzi said, when the flood came, when the flood came to Baghdad, the whole entire cemetery, the bodies was shown, and the, the water entered to the graves, and it said, stayed few meters away from the grave. Imam Ahmed didn't touch it. And all the people of Baghdad witnessed that. Witnessed that. Al-Ali Ali ibn al-Husayn al-Zabidi, one of the judges in, in Baghdad, his home burned. He said, every 
single thing in my house was burned, was burned, except a cubby, a chapter from Muslim Imam Ahmad was written by Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, his handwriting. This is the only thing was not burned in my house. Allah saved it. It is a good deed that you see in your grave. Your good deeds come to you in the shape of a good person in your grave, telling you that I'm your good deeds. It looks good, it smells good, give you a good company until the day of judgment comes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that al maut is a hard, is a very hard thing. It's a calamity. But for the believers, al maut is a different experience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Those who said Allah is our Lord, then they stood fast. They did good deeds in doing. How is their death experience what it looks like? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Two things. Don't be worried about what you are leaving behind your back and don't be afraid from the future. Then, He gives you the glad tidings of the Jannah, of the Jannah. Good for you in, when you will be resurrected from your grave. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that every woman pregnant will lay off her love. When a breastfeeding woman will leave her child. When you, can you imagine seeing your own son, your own father, your own family, your own daughter, your own wife, and you turn your back to them? You turn back, you run away from them? The day, warn them about the day when everybody regret what he or she did in this dunya. إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ وَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ That's it. There's no chance for anybody to add anything to his wife. And that day, وَيَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ فَفَزِعَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ فَفَزِعَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Everybody will be terrified in heavens and earth, except those who are among the good doers, among the good doers. Why? Because they fear this day in the dunya. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah said that those believers used to feed the, the hungry, used to feed the, the people who need food, they give, they donate, they do good deeds. And they do this because they fear the day of judgment. What is the what is the jaza? What is the reward? Good for them. That they will be saved in the day of judgment. That they will be surrounded by the angel. And you surrounding them, telling them, don't be worried, don't be afraid. This is the day that you've been promised. This is the day that you've been promised. سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ فَدْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ سَلَامٌ يعني Allah save you, protect you from everything. ادخلوها طِبْتُمْ You will be good. Enter Jannah. وَنُودُوا أَن تِلْكُمُ الْجَنَّةُ أُرِثْتُمُوهَا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ a call will call upon them. Enter paradise. As a word for the good deeds that you used to do. That how to tell Ihsan illa Ihsan? Any good you do today, that's the good that you get tomorrow. That's 
only good that you did today and tomorrow and after tomorrow and guess what? Forever. Forever you are in Jannah. In Jannah, which is no end for it. You ask about the people of Jannah? You ask about the people of Jannah? You ask about the people of Jannah? وَعِنْدَهُمْ قَاصِرَاتُ الطَّرْفِعِينَ You ask about the people of Jannah. تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ نَضْرَةَ النَّعِيمِ You ask about the people of Jannah. فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَعُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ يَأْكُلُونَ وَيَشْرَبُونَ وَيَتَنَعْمُونَ that's the people of Jannah. Something cannot, there's no word sometimes it's enough to describe. The real, actually is Ibn Abbas said, there is nothing in Jannah from what you have here in this dunya except the names. They are in happiness, they are in joy. They are getting into a Jannah that Allah made it by Himself for them. I ask you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I give you the choice between a house made of wood, made of wood, but this house will last with you in this winter season, in winter, or in Toronto, or in Montreal, or wherever you are, Detroit, wherever you came tonight from. A house made of wood and concrete, it will last with you. And I tell you, or I give you now a house made of gold. But guess what? This winter when it comes, it's not going to protect you. Which one you will choose? The wise person will choose the wood which will protect him in the winter. So why? Why are we leaving houses made of real good and so gold and silver in Jannah? To run after houses made from wood and concrete in dunya. And we know that the one in Jannah will last and the one in dunya will vanish. That's the reality. The good deeds will lead to the good end of this dunya. Will lead to the good end of this dunya, my brothers and sisters. Will lead that you end your life while you are doing something good. While you are pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It ends your life while you are so close to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a guarantee that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to the good doers. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let them end their life while they are doing something good. If they are being sincere. As Ibn Qayyim ibn Ashbir, he said, وَلَا يُعْرَفْ وَقَدْ مَضَتْ عَادَهُ اللَّهِ الْكَرِيمَ أَنَّ مَنْ صَلَحَ ظَاهِرُهُ وَبَاطِنُهُ أَنَّ اللَّهِ يُسْرِ الْعَاطِمَةَ Allah always with those who are good, but not only outside, outside and inside. They are not a shaitan's worst enemy in public, and they are his best friend in secret. No, not talking about those. May Allah protect all of us. My brothers and sisters, you know, maybe it's good to end with this point. One of the, out, the good outcome of the good deeds. One of the amazing uh, rewards of the good deeds. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward your good deeds by guiding you to do another good deed. Allahu Akbar. As much as you do good, Allah give you, Allah allowed you to make more good. That's why they said if you see somebody doing good deeds in the day, you have to know that he's been doing good in the night. And that's why if you understand this, if you understand this, you know how to how can you earn the good deeds? How can you earn the good deeds? If you want to enjoy the day and the night, if you want to read the list of the day and the night, فَقَدِّمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ اللَّيْفِ النَّهَارِ صَدَقَاتُ وَعْمَا صَالِحَةِ 
If you want Allah to reward you by allowing you to make Qiyam in Layl, make sure that you offer good deeds during the day so you enjoy the nights. You want to enjoy the khushu'. You want to enjoy khushu' in your salat, concentration. You can understand, fully understand the salat. You want to earn this, this is a good deed to have khushu' in the salat. If you want to earn it, offer something else. Offer that you pray this the salat according to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Salli kama salli al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakum min Allah an taqsha fi salat. Hasanat al iqtida bin Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. تأتي بحسبة الخشوع في الصلاة. The good deeds of following the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in the salat will lead to the good deeds of the خشوع. You want to enjoy reciting Quran and memorizing the Quran? I tell you, offer the good deeds of lowering your gaze. Offer the good deeds of protecting your eyes from seeing what is haram in the daytime. And I guarantee you, when you look at the mushaf. The verses will totally look different. You want to enjoy listening to the Quran? Protect your ear. Offer the good deeds, which is avoiding listening to what is haram. You want to have khushu' in the salat when you come to the masjid? Offer the good deeds by coming a little bit earlier. And make your rak'ah before the salat. And see how the salat will look like. You want to know the knowledge and to understand the knowledge and to understand the fiqh in the deen. Make sure that you remember Allah subhanahu wa in the day and the night. Hafal ala al-adhkar. Ta'atik hasanat al-ilm wa hasanat al-fahm wa hasanat al-fiqh. My brothers and sisters, whenever you look at it from this perspective, your whole concept, the whole concept of the good deeds will turn to be something there's no end for it. There's no end for it. There's no... In Islam we have minimum, but we don't have a maximum. The maximum that you don't cross the sunnah, you don't practice bid'ah. You don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but based on your Allah or your desire. But in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi have opened the door for us, where there's no limit for it. Because the Jannah is so huge. Because the reward in Jannah, there is no limit for it. And as much as you do today, as much as you earn from what you heard tonight, and more, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among Ahl Salah, make us among those who listen to the speech and to follow the best of it. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim, wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala, inna ka hamid wa majid, wa tizakum Allah wa khayr. I just want to say something about the course that I would love to see, I would love to do this course in Windsor, but unfortunately I will not be able to do that. I have to choose one place in, in Canada to, due to my schedule. Uh, uh, I would like to tell you a little bit about what I'm going to be teaching this week. Uh, this is my fifth course, to, my fifth time to teach this course. On a loss that is my work instead. I haven't fill, filled yet enough of this course. And whenever I'm preparing it, every time like the brothers in Toronto tell me, we are excited about the course. We have 400 people or 500 people. And the same thing in, 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 in last week in the New York. I challenge him, I tell them this. Well, life, you put all your excitement in one side of the scale. And you put my excitement about this course in the other scale. Mine is way more than yours altogether. And I challenge you. Why? Because I really love the, this. Uh, specifically this course. Why? Because it's talking about the life of, of the Uran. Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah used to say, Wallahi, inna ta'amul fi siyal salihi, ahabu ilayya min ta'amul fi makatawu bi al-fiqh. Studying and learning about the life of the scholars is more beloved to me sometimes than learning the fiqh that they have said or wrote. Absolutely. Because this is something every Muslim should learn from. Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, 5,000 attend his class. 400 write the hadith. And the rest, they learn it from his manners, from his sent, from his adab. Yaqul al-Dahabi, rahimahullah ta'ala. Al-Ulama were not one of the things that really, uh, uh, one of the conclusions, one of the points I try to stress in this course, Allah, to show you another 
a perspective to the skull. The skull, first of all, as a human, how they made a change on the people around them. Yeah, and when you read about somebody, his name Abdul Malik ibn Abjur, Abdul Malik ibn Abjur in Al Kufa, he's not one of them, I'm going to talk about, but maybe in future. They used to say in Al Kufa, in Al Walid ibn al said that his father, Abdul Malik, sent him when he was a kid. His father told him, Go study under Abdul Malik ibn Abjur. فَإِنِّي لَا أَعْلَمُ فِي الْكُوفَةِ أَحَدًا يُصْبِحُ عَلَيْهِ صَبَاحًا إِلَّا وَاسْتَادَ فِيهِ خَيْرًا وَعِلْمًا إِلَّا عَبْدِ الْمَلِكِ He said, if I look at the people of Kufa today, and I can think of somebody, every morning, his knowledge, his iman, his manners, are better than the previous day, will be this man. يعني every day he increased. Every day he goes one one level higher. Like, what he's going to learn from Abdul Malik ibn Abdul? I was looking forward to see what kind of ilm he's going to teach. Listen to the father advising his son. قال يا بني فتعلم من توقيه الكلام فإني لا أعلم أحدا أحرز لسانه منه. Allah. He said, I want you to learn from this sheikh how he avoided talking about things which it doesn't concern him. I don't know anybody in Kufa have control over his tongue like this man. That's what I teach in my course. That's what I want you to know about the scholars. That's what I want to expose to you by coming and looking and studying and seeing how those people have so self-control over themselves, how so much effect over the people that are around them, and so much impact in the society that they lived in. And to be able to see this, not only through one period, or 100 years in Islam, it is actually from 200 Hijri all the way to 1400 Hijri, taking you all the way from Spain all the way to India. I will walk you inside the village in, in Delhi to see the life in India, how it looks like in the time of the, of the skulls that we talk about, and to see the city of Qurtuba, of Qurtuba, where is no, a single illiterate citizen in the Muslims at that time, not a single illiterate person. A hundred percent of the population in Qurtuba in that time, they know how to write and to read. Unbelievable society. Then to go through Egypt, Al-Basra, Samarqand, Males, females, the good and the bad and the ugly in our history uh, as well. But through the life of those individuals. So I would really, I, I mean, would love to see uh, your community shelter come forth and to make that trip and journey uh, to learn and to share. Uh, basically, uh, since uh, the teaching is possible, I also the brothers and sisters that the amount of information. One thing makes me so excited because uh, I'm not, I'm, I don't preach in this class as much as we discuss things together as a, as a group. So that's why every class has on flavor because a lot of good feedback basically I get from uh, the brothers and sisters who participate. I have a son and he's thinking about going to college and join him. Uh, so, uh, if you have a, a wife, uh, take her journey to enjoy us inshallah this double weekend. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of you. Allahumma ja'al hadha nasibu mubaraka al-amiran. Allahumma fattahiru li kubi khayr. Jina abulu wa ma'ala sinat nabiyika sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma wafiqhum wafiq al-qaimina ala hadha nasibu li kubi khayr. Ya arhamu al-rahimin. Ahsan fitamana fitamana. Asbah dhuriyatina wa dhuriyatina. Mutababan minna wa minna ya akram wa akramin. Allahumma inna nisaluka al-tuqa wa al-afaa wa al-lina. أعطي نفوس أن تقواها وزكيها أن تخيرها من زكاها اللهم ولي على المسلمين خيارهم وولي أنهم شرارهم اللهم إن نسألك يا حي يا قيوم أن تكون المستضعفين من المسلمين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم إن نسألك أن تفك في قوتك أوصار المسلمين ظلمة يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آله و...